I get lots of messages from you guys about how to decipher or how to tell the difference of a Japanese knife from a fake Japanese knife. First of all, no city of origin and no country of origin. You have to understand Japanese are very proud people. They take a lot of pride in what they do. So when you're looking at a product, whether online or a physical product, and you don't see the words made in Japan, made in Seki, made in Sakai, you definitely know that is actually not a Japanese product. The second thing, and this is kind of a bit more less obvious, is when you see photos on websites and in advertisements showing a man uh, in a very dark room and he's you know banging away at a knife. Now I have been to places where people still make knives that way, but trust me, if you're buying a $30, $40 knife, that is not how knives are made. Again, that is very simple, basic, deceptive marketing. Very few knives are actually made by one man in that sort of manner today. I love this one. This kind of ties into the previous point is the knife is made in the same process as samurai swords. <laughs> oh guys, we love samurais. We love the intrigue of, you know, samurai swords being hand forged by a half a dozen bladesmiths. And we love the idea of how a sword can take as long as two or three months to make or even longer. So brands love to associate their knives or their product with a process that was developed hundreds of years ago, we as people gravitate towards things like that. And vendors and brands know that. So they actually will develop their entire marketing um, campaigns and strategies around the mystique of a product and the mystique of a process. The next thing is failure to list or omitting cladded and core steel. Now, for some strange reason, whenever we see a Japanese knife, they always sell it, or at least in this sort of fashion, they're always trying to sell it with Damascus cladding. Most Japanese knives out there don't have Damascus cladding, but the ones being sold to the masses are always advertised with Damascus because Damascus actually sells better than non-Damascus steels when it comes to you know, mass consumption. But for the average Japanese knife, Damascus is not the most popular thing. Core steels is very important to Japanese knives. If you guys have been shopping around Japanese knives for a while, the very first thing they'll advertise to you is what core steel is made of. If you buy any knife, not just Japanese knives, if you buy any knives from a reputable manufacturer, core steel is always mentioned when it comes to the description of the knife. So if that's being omitted, more than likely you're buying a very cheap quality knife. Next is limited availability. Nothing drives demand more than saying something is limited or limited production. Um, or a limited amount of time, unless you're actually buying a product that is a numbered edition, such as 250 out of 2000, you're not buying a truly limited edition product. We all love sales, don't we? But when you see something that says 75 to 90% off, uh, whether you're selling shoes, cutting boards, hats, t-shirts, jeans, whatever it is, what will compel you to discount your price 75 to 90% off its original price? Either you're charging way too much the first time, or your product isn't selling and you have to knock it down to what people are willing to buy it at. So either way, it was deceptive marketing from the very beginning. So when you see a product that has the words 75% or 90% off the original price, that should be a very big red flag. I'm not gonna say any more about that because I think anytime I see something like that, it's a very obvious scam. 50,000 chefs or customers have already enjoyed our knives. So just because 50,000 people are jumping off bridges, does that mean that you should go and jump off a bridge as well? Here's a funny one, our knives never dull. So whenever you see a knife company, I don't care who it is, whether a ceramic knife, whether a $500 Japanese katana blade, when it says anything that relates to the fact that it does not need to be sharpened, just be careful. Right now I can name you three or so manufacturers that have reached out to me and they've told me that their knives have a heat treatment of over 71 and that their knives will never need to be sharpened. I tell them, send me the knife, and I've never received an actual knife here. So, you know, a lot of manufacturers are making these outrageous claims about knives never needing to be sharpened, but truth is, that knife doesn't exist. And even if a knife is heat treated to 71, at some point, it will need to be sharpened. Now, this topic here requires a whole separate video, but which I'll make probably very soon. But if you're seeing a company that is not Japanese-based or not a Japanese company using things like VG10 SG2, more than likely, it's fake, um, well, fake VG10 or not Japanese VG10. Now there are Chinese steel companies actually making steels and they're calling it VG10 or they're calling it Japanese VG10 with an asterisk made in China. And so they're basically trying to take the formulas of VG10 and replicating it in China and taking that Chinese VG10 or the ASU10 and selling it to a Chinese manufacturer. But take it from me, if you're seeing a knife that is advertised with VG10, 
selling for 30 to 40 dollars or 50 dollars more than likely it's not real vg10 or at least not real japanese made vg10 and this one i love all sales final uh yeah i don't think anything else is needed on that point so to avoid becoming a victim it's plain and simple buy from reputable sources you know i buy my german knives and my japanese knives from cutlery and more and from chef's knives to go those are the two places i buy most of my knives from um, I'll buy from Amazon every once in a while as well. I'd rather pay 10, 20% more for a knife that I know exactly what I'm getting. And I'm not buying a fake Japanese knife and I have a real warranty. You can actually go and talk to somebody when there's a problem with your knife. So the next time you guys buy a knife out there that is advertised as 75 or more percent off, just read the fine print and I'm sure you guys will find a few things that will kind of raise a red flag. This video is not made to persuade you to buy an expensive knife and avoid all $30, $40 knives. That's not the case at all. This is only made to inform you that when you see a knife that has an original price tag of $300 and you're now getting it at 75 or 91% off, that to me is pure deceptive marketing and cheating people out of their hard earned money and I'm not okay with that. Um, so a quick update, all of Grill Addict's ad campaigns on Facebook has ceased. I don't know if their ad account was actually banned or stopped, or they simply just froze up and don't want to advertise for a while. But apparently my video was successful enough to actually get them to stop what they're doing. Uh, so I just want to say thank you guys for helping share my videos uh, with that campaign because that was definitely a thorn in my side. Seeing my face all over Facebook was not very comfortable, especially advertising knives that I don't endorse. So I just want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and viewers that helped share that video of the grilladdicts.com um, scam. Please share this video, get the message out there. I don't want more people getting scammed by these knife scams out there. So hopefully you will not be the victim of another knife scam. All right, guys, well, that is it for this video. Thank you for being here and I'll catch you in the next one.